yourself. That's in the first 45 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So three questions, complete control, clarifying health questions to make sure that you know what direction to go later mm -hmm. in the call. So when they start saying, well, I want a half a million a term and they have COPD and they're 68, you can just kind of taper them down, know where to go. And then you do the whole, here's my personal phone number, mm -hmm. which just builds massive trust. Yeah. Oh, the trust that he just established within a minute of that call is, I hope you guys all, that was worth showing up today. Without further ado, I'm beyond excited to have Mr. Tyler Glennon on with us. I'm going to give a short bio and let him expand on it. But this young man, as handsome as he is, is 24 years old. In his third month with us, protected over 100 families. His, um, his fourth month, he slowed down a little bit and protected 80 families. Fast forward, we're on his sixth month in life insurance sales, and he protects average between 40 and 50 families every single month, as well as he's leading a team that now protects over 200 families a month, and he's focused on growth, and he's just a tremendous guy. I've been got a chance to spend some time with him over the past few months. He was he spoke on stage at our annual convention just a few, uh, few months ago in Miami, which is incredible to hear him say. He did a great job of objections and uh, rebuttals and how, how to focus on that, and we're going to have him dig into that here shortly. But I've been talking a bunch, and I'm going to slow down and pass it to him and let him take over and, and uh, introduce himself and tell a little backstory so everyone kind of get to know you, brother. Yeah, and the first thing I want to say is that, you know, like the reason that I love this business and Grady kind of just touched on it a little bit is we all have the same opportunity to be able to do whatever we want inside the business. So like if Grady is maybe like at like a level eight, right, and I'm a level four. Grady's the spark notes, right? Like when I was in school, I never actually like read the books for the book reports. So like what I was trying to do is like go online and like Google the spark notes, right? Because I was trying to figure out all the stuff. Just I, I wanted to get all the, the good stuff rather than having to sift through all the crap to actually be able to get there, right? So like Grady, I'm going to be able to go to Grady and be like, hey man, like what do I have to do to get from 10 families a month on my own to 20? And then like, how do I get my agency to grow? And like, what do I have to, where should I invest my time? Right, so Grady's got all the answers. So I wanna plug into Grady because Grady's gonna be able to accelerate my growth. So day in and day out, like inside this business, like it's really important. And like when I got started, I didn't know anything about the insurance industry. I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know about building an agency. I didn't know anything. And there was, some, there was one person that I really like connected with and I saw doing it at a high level. And I just said, man, if that guy can do it, I can do it too. And I just started asking him questions and I just followed in his footsteps. And that's what's led me to get to where I am today. And there's people that are way higher levels that I'm following and asking questions and learning from now, like Grady. And I mean, we all have the same opportunity to be able to do the same things inside the space, which is why I love it so much. Me too, bro. Me too. So give us the backstory. So you're 24 years old, hitting the cover off the ball with production, building a team. What, where did you come from? What was the backstory? What, um, what led you to insurance? And then we'll kind of, then we'll go from there. Yeah. So I, uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania, ended up going off to, uh, to Maine to play college hockey, University of New England. And my whole thing was like, I just wanted to find a way to be able to make some money, <laughs> right? And like where I, where I came from, it was go to school, get a job. That's right. And I was like, all right, so I'm going to take school really, really seriously now. So I was in school at a 3.8 and I had an internship and I was doing all this stuff to set myself up for, to be able to get a job. And I started to ask my manager, I was like, hey, like how much do the entry level positions make at the company? And he was like, $42,000 a year. And I was like, man, 42? Like I wanted to make like six figures, you know? I thought that would be cool. And I was listening to podcasts and reading books and I heard Brad Lee's podcast about starting, you know, getting into in insurance. And I was following him at that point. And, you know, some things happened. Um, ended up, girlfriend ended up dumping me. And I was like, I'm out. Like, I don't even want to be in, in school anymore anyway. And like, I'm just going to leave. So I just ended up moving back home into a friend's house and just doing insurance full time. And at that point, I had done it two months with um, part time and I wasn't really successful. And I think that the reason I wasn't successful up until that point is because I didn't take it seriously. I was just kind of doing my free time when I had the time because I was in class. I was traveling for hockey. I, was, I had practiced during the day and, you know, there's stuff going on. Um, but right when I took it seriously, I started to do, to do really, really well. Uh, and so I dropped out, 
started to uh, just dial all day long. I wanted to try to accelerate my learning curve as fast as possible and just put in a ton of activity and action. That's something that you'll hear me say a lot is just activity and action because the more that you do, the more that you're going to learn. And that doesn't mean that after one day of dialing a lot, you're going to be able to learn everything that you need to know to be able to be successful. That just means that after failing forward and just learning over and over and over, like even if you're not doing well, you're going to be able to take the lessons and the things that you're learning. And now you have more information, more wisdom and experience to be able to make better decisions inside your business. Right. So now you're like, Hey, this works. This doesn't, I'm going to keep doing this. And that's kind of where I was at. Um, just trying to throw stuff against the wall, do as much training as possible, watch a lot of videos and just get a bunch of information to be able to make better decisions. Cause at that point in time, I didn't have any money and I took out a loan for my first batch of leads. So I had to make it work. <laughs> Good for you. Um, the girlfriend, does she try to reach back out to you now to get back together? Because that would be like, this guy's, I made a mistake, honey. I'm so sorry. I, I, I was overlooked your, your potential. What, what do we need to, I want to come move in with you in Arizona. <laughs> no, we're not together. Okay, no, good. Yeah. All right, good. Hey, fo talked. focus on your business. <laughs> hey, you know, it was a mistake, mistake, sweetie. Sorry. Um, so, okay. You're now here focused. You're in Pennsylvania. You're dialing. How did you end up in Arizona? Yeah. So Andy Elliott ended up partnering with Brad, um, for real financial to run the training. And, uh, Andy and I connected and talked one time and, uh, he basically convinced me, um, that it was the right decision. And I totally agreed with him to move out to Arizona to, to live with him for a couple of months to basically, um, you know, help him and his wife figure out a little bit about insurance, but also they were trying to, uh, show me and give real financial the, a piece of the company that Brad is building, uh, like someone who could set the standard and kind of be the example. And I was all in. So he basically closed me on moving out to Arizona, living with him. So I got to spend some, uh, a good amount of time with him and his wife, Jacqueline. Um, and I lived with them for, for four months and, you know, never left. <laughs> That's it's cool. Welcome to Arizona. Yeah. I, I, I love it here, man. So happy to have you. So, okay. So we fast forward. Now you're building a team, selling consistently. Let's talk about you know, a lot of people are always looking for someone to copy, right? Most people are coming to us, start part-time, dabble in it. Maybe they did insurance before, weren't that successful. They find us, and now we have a standard of work ethic that is, un I mean, it's uncommon in the business landscape. I always make a joke. I'm like, if these telemarketers who call me about Medicare one time, if they called me triple dialed me, I'd probably end up buying some Medicare just because they call many, they don't, no one calls three times. No one calls six times in a day. And you think about the way that we present and push to get the job done here. It's just so different. So now here you are, you're in Arizona, you're focused on your team, you're focused on your personal production. What is your schedule? Like what is you, what are you, what are things that you do that you feel are like cornerstones or bookends to your day or your business practice that puts you in a good state of mind so that you can be successful and then also things that maybe you're guiding. So what's your schedule on a weekly basis to kind of for people that go, okay, I could do that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's changed over time. Sure. And I'll, I guess I'll just touch on this first. When I was just trying to figure out how to dial, it was dial at least, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. And that was because I was just trying to learn as much as possible. Um, yeah, outside of that, like right now with what I'm doing, I love to go to the gym in the morning get my hour of exercise in. Um, I love to read, listen to podcasts, books, audiobooks, things like that. Just getting good information. Again, like always just trying to get to the next level of wherever we're at, right? Um, and then after that, um, I love to spend a couple of, my first couple hours of my day, is checking in with new agents, getting people set up, trying to give everybody the opportunity and all the, the correct resources and show them, give, give everybody the answers that they need to be able to be successful, right? Um, so that's the first part of my day. And then I'm dialing in the afternoon, um, in the middle part of my day. And then, uh, you know, we're doing zoom trainings and I'm dialing at night too, or I'm onboarding new agents and trying to recruit and, you know, trying to build that way. Okay. So, and that's every day. Yeah. 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 Five, six days a week, no doubt. And then, uh, on Sundays, a lot of my day is one-on-one -on -one calls with my team and I'm doing zoom calls, you know, like I'm really big on, you know, numbers and like KPIs and especially with telesales, I think that you have to be, okay. you know, with in-homes, it's like, all right, Hey, hit your 30 appointments. Right. And over the phone, it's like, get to your 30 presentations, okay. but how do we get to 30 presentations? Right. So in my head, when my agents come to me and they're like, Hey, I need help here. I'm like, okay, what are your KPIs? Are you, do you have the activity level to be able to make adjustments? Cause if you don't have the activity level, there's no reason for us to believe that you're going to be able to get the results. But if you have the activity level every single day, which for me, my KPIs for my guys and what we do, it's two, at least two, four hour sessions of dialing a day. 
that's going to give you enough dials to be able to work the amount of leads that you're supposed to get at, on a full-time schedule. And inside of that, I want to have the attitude that I'm going to dial 300 people. I might not hit my 300 because I'm going to have conversations, but I want to be dialing. I don't want to be scrolling on Instagram, screwing around, looking out the window, you know, whatever it is, right? I want to be focused. And I want to be dialing. I want to have a high activity level. When I do that, I'm able to get two to three presentations each session and one to two sales a day, five presentations a day, one to two sales over the phone. That's our day. That's our goals. Those are the KPIs. So if my agents don't hit those, that's step one. You have to hit those to be able to have a conversation about us actually tweaking something. And those are what my Sundays are. It's, it's spending time with them, just trying to do a little bit more one-on-one -on -one stuff and, and give them the opportunity to be able to, uh, you know, get the information that I've been able to accumulate over the time. That's awesome. And so same one more time. It's, this is this, these are your standards. Go through one more time. Yeah. So the first thing is two, four hour Someone sessions. Someone write this down, put it in the chat. <laughs> Go ahead. Two, four hour sessions of dialing okay. because you have to hit you have to get enough dials in to be able to be successful. Okay. Um, so two four-hour sessions. Inside of that, I want to have the attitude and the activity level of I'm going to hit 300 people per session. Okay. And you're probably not going to, which is totally fine. But that's the attitude we have to have. When okay. we have that, we're going to be able to get two to three presentations each session. Inside of that, we should be able to get one to two sales a day. So Got one it. sale, um, you know, Really like one sale out of five presentations is the goal. So five presentations a day, if we can get one sale out of five presentations, that's good, but we have room to grow. And if you're getting zero sales, then we need to tweak something. If you have the activity level, then you have to come back and say, hey, I'm doing everything right. You're telling me to do all this stuff, but I don't have the results. Likely, you know, something is going wrong during the conversation and we can fix that. So those are the, uh, the KPIs. It's fantastic. So, I mean, eight hours a day of work times five days. It's 40 hours. That's a job. That's a regular job. And there's many people that go to work for 25, 30, 40 bucks an hour, right? And then you go, well, here, insurance, the, either you do that, do one to two sales per four hour block of time, two to four sales a day. Uh, let's just say that's 10 to 20 sales a week, 10 to 20 sales inside of 40 hours. That hourly rate is uh, exceptional. But most people go, I don't want to dial all day. And mm -hmm. I'm, this is hard. And I don't like rejection. And people are mean, Tyler. And they called me names. And they told, you know, and then they just come up with these, like, they, they, they take it personal, mm -hmm. right? When this is just business. This is just a business transaction where you're looking for people that, are, that love their families more than most. That's why they filled out a lead card. And they just need someone with confidence to come in there and help clarify the confusion they have about life insurance. And really important thing that you just said there is confidence, right? If I believe in what I'm, what I'm selling, no matter what it is, I want to be able to transfer that into the people that I'm actually selling, right? Because if I'm explaining why this is such a great thing to somebody and I don't believe it and I don't have that clarity and that certainty in my voice, and again, over the phone, the only thing that they have to judge us is our voice. So we have to be able to explain display that confidence through our voice. So knowing what to say in different situations and giving them all the reasons to buy and move forward because we're the perfect person to do business with today rather than giving them excuses to want to think about it and push that decision off because we don't sound like we really know what we're talking about. And there's a huge difference and you'll see the gap like if you get hit with objections or just leading up to the close like there's some little things that I can like go over with you guys some tactical stuff that will help but at the end of the day, it's really just trying to give them the courage and the confidence to be able to move forward today and do business with us today rather than Jake from State Farm tomorrow. I love it. So what, let's just a couple of quick rapid fire questions. When you're dialing, what do you, mm -hmm. what do you like ring, ring, what do you say? Like how do you take control, set the tone, what are all the things that you do when dialing? Because there's hundreds of people on here and there's thousands that are going to watch replay and they go, I just want to copy what this guy's doing. So yeah. let's give them some specific word tracks that you say to take control in these telesale calls. And then we'll do the rebuttals after that. Cool. Yeah. Which one do you like ring you? I want you to, I, I always screw it up because I try to be funny and I'm not funny. And or I try to just be normal and it ends up being funny. So you just do it and I'll, we'll just sit here and we'll watch. Okay, cool. So like okay. just like step step one through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you're dialing. What happens? Yeah. So like this is this is what my intro would be. And I can explain just like really quickly why I do what I do um, right afterwards. Um, so ring, ring. Hello. Hey, this is Tyler. Looks like I got some of the information that you had put in, Grady, looking at different information on life insurance programs. Were you just searching for you or for you and a loved one, right? There's always three questions that I ask at the beginning, and there's no specific reason. It's just that I want them to admit that they filled something out. Once they admit that they filled something out, I can have a conversation with them. 
did you, were you looking around for you or for you and a loved one? Were you looking at final expense programs or to leave a little bit extra for your family or I'll com confirm something, you know, like their date of birth, right? Um, whatever they say after they admit that they filled it out, right? Yes, that is me. I'm looking around for just myself. Awesome. Well, there's going to be over 30 different companies that we have the opportunity to take a look at today. We're going to want to make sure we look at something that really does make sense for you to be able to distinguish which one that's going to be any kind of medical diagnoses or ailments in the past, right? And then I'm just going to go do some medical questions, any cancer, COPD, kidney, uh, liver issues, things like that, right? Smoker, non-smoker. Go ahead and grab a, a pen and paper, Grady. I want to make sure I get you some of my information just so you do know who you're talking to today. Now, this is a highly regulated industry, so I want you to take down my NPN, which is my national producer number, and it's tied to all of my insurance licenses, as well as my personal cell phone number. And Grady, I don't always give this out, but I want to make sure that you have this because going forward, you're not going to ever have to call any insurance companies. You're never going to have to reach out to them and speak to any robots or wait on hold. You're going to be able to reach out to me directly. This is the same number that my mom actually calls me on. Okay. And I'm not like Jake from State Farm. I'm going to be working with you and your family going forward. Okay. So I'm just trying to separate myself. From, That's in the first from other 45 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So three questions, complete control, clarifying health questions to make sure that you know what direction to go later mm -hmm. in the call. So when they start saying, well, I want a half a million a term and they have COPD and they're 68, you can just kind of taper them down, know where to go. And then you do the whole, here's my personal phone number, mm -hmm. which just builds massive trust. Yeah. Oh, the trust that he just established within a minute of that call is I hope you guys all, that was worth showing up today. If you didn't, if you didn't gather that. So keep going, I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, from there, um, after that, I'm, I'm really just asking questions. I'm trying to figure out exactly what they're looking around for, what they believe it's going to look like. Cause some people, like you said, are trying to get $800,000 in coverage and they're not, you know, 89 years old. Right. Um, and that's just not something that we can do. Uh, so I'm just going to ask, Hey, you know, based off of earlier questions, um, you know, you're looking around for final expense coverage. Do you want to go final expense with burial or cremation, right? Uh, burial. Okay. How much does that cost? 15,000. Okay. And I think that we can both agree prices as time goes on are probably going to increase, right? Okay. And who's your beneficiary going to be for your policy? It's going to be little, little Susie. Okay. Well, does Susie have the money to be able to come up with that right now? What is this going to look like for her? Is she going to have to take a loan out? Is she going to have to borrow the money? Do a GoFundMe? Like, I just want to ask questions there just because like, that's, that's the separator of people making the decision today and tomorrow with Bob from down the street. Um, so as I'm just going through what their situation looks like, I want to just paint the picture of what it's actually going to be like with nothing in place or not enough in place or, you know, whatever the situation is right then and there. Um, and then I'll just talk about, how uh, I want to ask more questions on that stuff and every situation is just a little bit different, but that's kind of the framework, the basic stuff that I'm going to do right there. Um, and then once we go through this process and they explain, this is the most important thing. And I said confidence, you know, we talked a little bit about, about that before. And this is, I think, the thing that separates the people from getting the people to move forward today and eliminating the stall objections. Once people tell me that they need it or that their son or daughter or Anybody in their family is going to have to come out of pocket to be able to pay for this or whatever the reason is. It's the trial close is, hey, since it seems like it's not a matter of whether or not we're going to get the coverage today, we'll look at two to three different options. That way we can find something that makes sense for you and you can get the protection for them. Is that fair? Okay, got it. And then we're going to talk about how Americo has double accidental, it has living benefits and just really build the value up with the company. And, um, you know, in, also in there, I'm going to ask a little bit about their finances. I want to say, hey, you know, most people that I work with are either on $700 up to $1,500 of income on a monthly basis. Is that kind of where you sit as well, right? Just try to put them in a, a group there that makes them feel comfortable because that's who I work with. And then, you know, you know how much they make. and You can kind of line something up that actually makes sense for them based off of that information. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the process. Then I'm just going to you know, hey, here's three options. Which one makes the most sense for you? But it's the attitude of it's not a matter of whether or not we're going to get it Say it today. again. Do the trial close again because that was so good. Yeah, since it isn't a matter of whether or not we're going to get the coverage today, we'll go ahead and look at two to three different options. Is that fair? Right? And it's, it's, it's the attitude of we're going to get it today because you need it. You just told me all the reasons that you need it, so we're going to get it. Like, it would be ridiculous if we just sat on the phone for 30 minutes and you told me all the reasons that you needed it and we didn't do anything. Like that is exactly why I think people, like when people have that attitude, they have success on the phones yeah. 100% because it's too easy 
to do a stall objection on phone sales for these people because they've been stalling just, their whole life. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you, so let's say we pick it, we boom, we submit. What is your end close tie down about to hang up? Like how do you solidify the sale? How do you hammer it home, create gratitude environment? What do you say the last 30 seconds that goes, that keeps, keeps more business on the books and all that? What are your, what are your end of, end of call word tracks? Yeah. So I always ask for a, refer a referral right out, right afterwards. Um, okay. I'm always saying, I'm really glad that we were able to get your final expenses taken care of, but I want to make sure that you don't have to come out of pocket for anybody else's final expenses. So who around you doesn't have anything put in place right now, because we need to make sure that we get them coverage. Uh, I say that, and then I'll always say, you're going to get the policy in the mail seven to, 10, seven to 10 business days from now. When you get that, I want you to give me a call so we can go over it together just to make sure that you understand everything that's in there. Does that sound fair? Then I'll always send them an email just with you know, the details, the policy, my personal you know, contact info. That's awesome. And, and that's it. Perfect. I'll reach out, reach out to me. If you have any questions, send them an email. Any, any follow-up calls? Uh, yeah. Not, you know, I'll, yeah, I, I like to reach out to them um, you know, for a couple of different reasons, but I'll usually reach out like a month afterwards, and I always try to ask for a referral. And it's When you make that call to the referral, what do you say? It's always, or I'll ask them if they want to add on. So, and it's, it's always, Hey, um, you know, Susie, I'm really glad that we were able to get this taken care of for you. You know, the policy looks good. Everything's okay. The family's doing well. The dog's doing good. Right. Whatever they told me beforehand. Sure. Um, okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Now I want to make sure again that, you know, no one else has to, or you're not gonna have to come out of pocket for anybody else's final expenses. So is there anybody else that you can think of that we need to have a conversation with them about their financial situation? So you don't have to come out of pocket, right? Like I'm protecting them. Like I'm sure. on their side. Um, and you know, sometimes I get a, a referral out of that and sometimes I don't, but I think it comes from a place of care. So I think it's, that's what, you know, what do you say to referral when you call them? Hey, I just uh, had a conversation with Susie. We were actually able to get her set up with a life insurance policy. It's going to take care of the final expenses. She wanted me to reach out to you just because she mentioned that you don't have anything in place right now, or you could use a policy review just to make sure that you do have the best thing at the best rate. Cause I'm sure that you notice prices have been changing in the environment lately. Who do you have currently? Or do you have anything currently? Bingo. Bingo. Smooth as butter.